Welcome to Integrated Medicine Perspective. I'm Dr. Wenli Liu. Use of protein powder is extremely common in our life. If you go to a grocery store uh, in the supplement aisle, you can easily see various kinds of protein powders occupying a quarter or even half of the uh, grocery shelves. Many among my patients, clients, and friends uh, use protein powder. I ask them why they use protein powder. Their answers mainly give two reasons. One is that protein is a better energy than sugar, so our diet should be high protein and low carbohydrates. So the protein powder definitely can help with the high protein part. Now, another reason is that muscle formation takes protein. Protein powder can help increase protein intake, so increase muscle formation. The use of protein powder is extremely common among cancer patients, especially those with malnutrition and severe weight loss. Their dietitians and nutritionists will encourage them to use protein powders to ensure adequate protein intake. Now, are protein powders all beneficial and harmless? I don't think so. I really think protein powder has some hidden dangers. Um, Harvard Health Publishing posted an article uh, previously warning people about toxin contaminations uh, in commercially available protein powders. I put the link to that article below. Certainly, toxin contamination uh, is a serious problem. But let's say those protein powders are pure protein without any contamination. Are they then become harmless? I think when it comes to the use of protein powder, we at least need to ask ourselves two questions. One is that, is protein a better energy than sugar? The second is, in our dietary approaches to help ensure adequate protein intake, what is the position of protein powder? Well, let's start with the first question. Is protein a better energy than sugar? Protein to our body, the main function is structural. The formation and repair of our bone, muscle, down to every single cell requires protein. There are other biochemical functions require protein. For instance, the production of nitric oxide requires an amino acid called arginine. What does nitric oxide do for us? It can dilate blood vessels, reduce um, blood pressure. It inhibits um, platelet gathering. In other words, it inhibits uh, blood clot formation. So you can see its important function in the management of coronary artery disease and hypertension. As a matter of fact, many pharmaceutical agents are designed based on that mechanism. But when our body uh, acquires an excessive amount of protein, more than our structural needs, more than those biochemical function uh, requires, our body does not have specific places to store protein. So what do we do with the excess protein? Well, our body can burn it for energy. We can also turn protein into fat and store it in the fatty tissue. So excessive amount of protein intake can lead to increased uh, fat mass formation and increased cholesterol levels. Beyond that, regardless whether our body turn protein into energy or turn it into fat for storage, the two processes will generate nitrogen-containing waste, ammonium. Excessive amount of ammonium is harmful to our body. It can lead to inflammation. The major organs to manage ammonium are the liver and kidneys. So excessive amount of protein intake not only can lead to increased fat formation, elevated uh, cholesterol levels, and inflammation. It also puts excessive amount of burden on the liver and kidneys. So our protein intake should not be excessive. Definitely not the higher the merrier. It should be the right amount. Adequate, but not excessive. On the other hand, the burning of sugar only generates carbon dioxide and water. It does not have the problem of nitrogen-containing wastes.
So as a form of energy, sugar is cleaner than protein. Now, I'm not here to promote consumption of sugar or any form of refined carbohydrates. I think in our dietary approaches, those pure calorie empty foods have very limited uh, functions. Um, this will lead to our second question. Increased protein intake help uh, muscle formation. That probably is only halfway true. And we have to exercise to help with muscle formation. But let's say we exercise and we use protein powder to help a protein intake, but we don't go over an excessive amount. Is that okay? We just talked about uh, empty calorie foods. The reason we call sugar and refined carbohydrates empty calorie foods because they are empty of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, trace elements, antioxidants, and probably many other essential but unknown nutrients. By that concept, protein powders are also pure or near pure protein extracts from foods. They are also empty of nutrients. So in my opinion, protein powder is another form of empty calorie foods. People might ask, well, I use protein powder and it definitely helped with my muscle formation. How do you explain that? When our body acquire empty calorie foods, we need various nutrients to properly metabolize those energy. Those empty calorie foods certainly uh, don't come with nutrients. So where do we get all those nutrients? Well, we make it from other foods. That means when we use protein powder as one of the major protein approach, we need to consider nutrients balance. We need to make sure that our other foods will provide adequate nutrients to help properly metabolize uh, the protein intake. Let's say we don't get enough uh, nutrient intake. We still have our body reserve to use. We can get nutrients from our nutritional reserve to help metabolize the pure protein. When we are healthy, our nutritional reserve is more than likely adequate. So a very short period of time of empty calorie food intake may not result in serious nutritional issues. But if we consume empty calorie foods every day, we use our body's nutritional reserve every day. Is that a good long-term nutritional method? More than likely not. For cancer patients with severe malnutrition and weight loss, or for patients with any other chronic illnesses and malnutrition, if we just increase um, protein intake by the form of protein powder, or probably use some protein shakes, will we solve the underlying malnutrition problem? That is a question for patients, doctors, nutritionists, and dietitians to ask. I think for these vulnerable population, our dietary approach, our nutritional approach needs to be much more comprehensive, complete, and balanced than just ensure adequate calorie and protein intake. I certainly agree with Harvard's um, article's warning about toxin contamination in protein powders. But even without any contamination, I still think protein powder is just another form of empty calorie. By that concept, it is not any better than sugar. I'd love to see your comments and questions. Um, please tell me your thoughts about protein powder. And that's all for today. I will see you soon.